Hey everybody, I want to talk about a product and platform that I absolutely love and our latest sponsor, Interseller, the prospecting and outreach platform of choice for recruiters and sellers. Whether you're doubling down on business development or recruiting talent, Interseller does all the heavy lifting of finding contact data, automating the email and follow-up process, and syncs all that rich data into 20-plus CRM and ATS platforms. Reach out now and get going on a two-week free trial and let them know you heard about it from Adam on the podcast today. Check out the link on the website. Appreciate it. Welcome to the podcast, where we introduce you to incredible humans who share their journeys with the mission to inspire you to harness your own inner tenacity to drive your life and career forward. And now, your host, Adam Posner. Hey, podcast listeners, this is Chris Mueller, the producer of the podcast, tuning in with part two of Adam's interview with former NHL player Dave Skatcher. Now, if you already caught part one of this episode, you know that Adam and Dave kept it pretty lighthearted and talked about Dave's road to the NHL. The second half of this episode gets pretty crazy pretty quickly as Dave tells the story of his career ending injury. We want to thank Dave for coming on and sharing with us, and we hope you enjoy the conversation as much as we did. Thanks for listening. And here it is. And I'm That's Dave Scatcher cool. from a town of 6,000 people that people told me I'd never make it. And it's too small and I'm too skinny. And like now I'm in the show and I'm doing stuff. Like uh, that's pretty proud. It's a, this, is, this is a good man. And, and let's, mm-hmm. let's take it to the dark side here, right? You've, you've had your hits, you've taken it, been yeah. rattled around, but t- take us to that final hit. You know, what, what did you feel and what was going through you when, when, like, did you know it was over at that point when you took that last? It was a pretty <coughs> shitty hit too. Yeah. Um, well, there's two ways we can go with this. Uh, there's there's, choice. there's a there's a shortened version, which I think is the right call for now. If you want to hear the rest, you can read the book. Um, I get lit up when I'm I get sent down to the minors from St. Louis, and there's four games to go left in the minors, and they're going to bring me out back up for playoffs. And the the puck drops. It's the start of the game. I make a great play. I'm going full speed. I make a backhand pass. And this defenseman, like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, after I pass the puck, like I don't have any guard up. I'm going full speed. He's coming at me full speed. Blows me up. I'm knocked out in midair. I fall down. I hit my head on the ice. And for half a second, I'm actually like conscious And then I just drop into unconsciousness for nine, 10 minutes. As I'm on the ice, I actually leave my body. I have this crazy near death experience where I actually meet God. I'm walking with God. Like, and I don't even go to church. Like I never went to church. Like this is like new, new experience. I'm in the light. I'm walking with the light. I have this flash and I'm giving you guys the fast version, but um, everything's perfection, by the way, in heaven. So you don't have anything to worry about. You're all good. (laughs) <laughs> but I have to splash in my one-year-old, my two-year-old, and my four-year-old at my grave site. And they're flinging themselves on my casket as the guy's lowering the casket into the ground. And they're getting hit by dirt that's being like poured onto the casket. And they're all in these little black suits. And I just start bawling. And it was the only negative like flash that I had the whole time. Everything else was perfection and beautiful and expansive and light. And I freeze and I say, can I go back? And the message back to me is like, well, you can, you don't have to, you're home. And I'm like, yeah, but they're pretty little. I'm like, can I go back? Yeah, but don't worry. I'll take care of them. Everything will be okay. (laughs) And I'm like, I think I got to go back. And I decide to come back. I come back into my body in the ambulance. And this is, you know, a 10 minute, uh, I was unconscious for 10 minutes. I wake up in the ambulance. I'm on a spinal board. They've cut off all my equipment. My head's in a thing. And um, for a few seconds, I'm not I'm not totally in my body. So I'm still blissed out. And my jaw's dislocated. My collarbone's broke. My ribs are broke. My head's got bleeding in it. And I'm like, do you guys see that? Do you guys see what I just saw? Was that amazing? And I like start, and my jaw's flapping around. And they hold me down. And they're like, sir, you've been in an accident. You've been in an accident. Um, you're at the hospital. We, 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 we're worried about your neck and we're worried about your head. We're going to get you up to the MRI room. And as I came back into my body, the heaviness that I felt 
contrast from where I just was into my body. And then the pain of the injuries and the heaviness of this world compared to that was almost unbearable. It felt like I had an elephant sitting on my chest and I instantly regretted my decision to come back. And then for three years, I was in survival. I was locked. I was like protecting myself. I didn't, I was, my body was just in shock from the injury and the stuff that was going on in my head. And I lost my memory. I had no memory. Uh, I went into hiding. I just hide in my movie theater. I drink myself to sleep. Uh, I slurred my speech. I dragged my leg when I walked. Like there was weird, my body was just broken. And that lasted three and a half years. And then I went, the Mayo Clinic basically kicked me out. And I was going three days a week to the Mayo Clinic. And they're like, Dave, we've just run everything we can for you. Unfortunately, this is just how how it's going to be. You're going to have permanent disabilities. And I'm like, what? You I'm not ready to accept that. You didn't want to accept I'm, it at that point. You're, 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 you're a fighter. I'm 36 right? years you're, old. You worked your ass off. I'm 36 years old. Like, I got another 50 years, 60 years to go. I can't, I'm re, like, re, pardon, the, and I know this isn't politically correct, but my brain had retardation. It was slow. Yeah. My, my cognitive function wasn't working. So I'm like, I can't, you can't be done. You didn't fix me. And I'm like, sorry. And I just cried in my car that day and I drove home and I'm like, I didn't want to tell my wife. I'm like, I got this is like, now I started panicking and I was like already having anxiety attacks and stuff. And I'm like, Oh my God, like, if this is my life. Like I can't keep going. And I started thinking really crazy, dark thoughts and long story short, I, I started cursing at God. Cause I'm like, I know you're real. Why are you abandoning me? Da, 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 da. And then, you know, I, I begin to take this journey with all these amazing teachers and coaches and healers and energy workers all over the shaman and grandmasters and uh, monks. That was something that, we, that was never in your life beforehand, that, that, that mindset and, and lifestyle. And you, you open yourself up to that. But what, what was, I want to pause you for a minute there. You know, what, I want to talk about the turning point in the recovery, mm-hmm. right? Where you said you felt God speaking to you through your own eyes. I want to quote what you yeah. said here. Mm-hmm. Quote, I'm sorry that I had to make you suffer like that in the last few years of your life, but in order for you to help the people that are going to be coming your way, you need to understand immediately what depression and anxiety feels like and hopelessness felt like because you are going to help them get over it. Mm-hmm. That's powerful shit, man. That injury was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It's the greatest thing. I'm so grateful for it. Without that, I wouldn't be on the path that I'm on now. And I wouldn't be having the impact that I have now from like an authentic, real place where I truly love people and I want them to win. I want them to be happy. I want them to heal. And I'm telling you, man, the the, the stuff that I've dealt with, with, with coaching, I, I've done over, it's gotta be in the thousands of coaching calls with people or last decade. And um, there's almost nothing that I haven't seen or heard. But what I do realize is that people aren't these roles that they're just pure souls. And their souls have been hurt, or their souls have been bruised. And part of us helping each other move along during fear and during the pandemic and during all this stuff, our world's a mess right now. But when you know, somebody loves you and has your back and cares about you, that means a lot. You can really like get a lot of, you can get some traction there. The, the times when it gets scary and people withdraw like I did and go dark and like you don't hear from them or see from them and they're just by themselves and they're disconnected. They're disconnected from everything. They're disconnected from healing. They're disconnected from love. They're disconnected from all of the things that are working, that are trying to get to them. And for me, I had so much masks on, so, so many masks on, so much armor over my heart and soul from leaving home at 16 to having my heart broken for the first time to getting spanked from my dad for the first time to having to be tough and strong and never show weakness and never show fear. All of those things. It's like, man, like it's opposite of what my real nature is. I'm a lover, man. I love people. I love helping people. I'm a giver. I'm soft. I'm sensitive. I'm emotional. And to turn all those buttons off and become a robot and a killer and a gladiator. Listen, there's pieces of the gladiator that I've taken back. And I'm like, I need that discipline. I need that mindset. mindset. The mindset. Yeah, the mindset. But there's stuff that I don't need. I don't need the lies. I don't need to pretend. I don't need not being truthful and honest. 
Yeah. And everyone's journey is in a, in a different direction. I, I want to ask you, you went through some really fucking awful physical injuries as well as the mental shit. How did you, were you able to compartmentalize the, the road forward to repairing each? Where did they intertwine? Where did they intersect? Did, did, did the ability to work on your mindset first help you heal quicker and better? I can't even imagine. Like, it's one thing to be in an accident and you're dealing with the, the PTSD, but this was a culmination. So when I had the first miracle, I was removing these masks and armor in the back of a conference room. And the drill was, the exercise was like supposed to be a couple of minutes. And I hooked into something big. I knew it was like, I knew this was more important to me than like anything. Because I couldn't find little David. I couldn't find the kid that I was born as, this pure little angel that just was a sense of little soul and loved helping people. I couldn't find him. All I could see was this hardened, broken, uh, desensitized individual. I had millions of dollars in the bank. I have a dream wife, dream kids, everything. And I wanted to kill myself. Like, what's wrong with that? But do, you, but do you blame playing hockey for that? Or was that something that was in your control? I think I, hockey players that don't. I mean, listen, it's a tough sport. Well, and, and loss of identity road. too. Like loss of identity is such a huge thing. Like, you know, I coached one NHL guy. You were commoditized. You were basically a commodity. Yeah. Oh, I, I got a guy in the NHL that I was helping and uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but he had a hundred million bucks in the bank and he was ready to end his life. And it's like, how, how do we get here? Like, and he felt like he wasn't part of anything. He felt like he didn't belong. He felt like... um he should have played longer. He felt like all of these mm. weird feelings, but ultimately he wasn't a hockey player anymore. So who was he? He, he? he was a nobody in his mind now. And the rest didn't really matter. And he was like, nothing if you're not. And he's lost. So, yeah, I guess, I guess the, the hugest thing, because it's a good question, mindset came first with the healing. I believe that when I understood the concept that all of God's grace and love and light and the universe, whatever you believe in, is trying to get to me and heal me and give me information and whispers and nudges and and guide me. But I was so covered up, man. Like I was lugging this armor around like somebody's going to take my job, that I had to be the smartest kid in class, that I had to like all these preconceived things that were uh, anchored into my system what I thought was reality when the true reality was if I could just get back to how I was created by my creator, that wow. that would be a more easy way to be. You were, almost, you were basically reborn. I mean, this is, this I'm is, telling this is crazy. you. So let's, let's pivot and talk about the road forward. And you've truly embraced, um, you know, not just coaching, but you know, the, the concept of awakening our inner, inner champion, Talk to us a little bit about your approach to coaching, what all-star coaching is is all about. And I'll be straight up, like how the hell is this different than everything else out there? Oh, it's completely different than everything else out there. I'm willing to go down those paths that people don't want to talk about. Oh, Dave, you're not supposed to talk about spirituality. You're not supposed to talk about like, uh, you know, it's all supposed to be light and fluffy and everything's perfect and da 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 like. One of the first things we do in my coaching program is I, I call the first day is like the big dump and we dump out all of the shit from our lives mm -hmm. and the limiting beliefs and the rules and regulations that somebody else put in your brain and told you, Adam, a good boy would never do this. A, ba a bad boy does this. So then you would take right. that as truth because it's from a parent or a teacher or principal or right. it's coming from a point of authority. of course. And, and then you go, well, that's true. So, OK, I'll never do that again. And then think about how many rules that other money's hard to make, um, you know, for women like, oh, you don't need a man. OK, so I don't need a man. That's a new rule. OK, I got it. Like all of these things. They become our operating system and most of them aren't ours. No. So the reason why we have the insane results, when I'm talking insane results, like I'm talking about a three point one million dollar turnaround after a meditation I did with a client when he was going to declare bankruptcy. When I, when I'm talking about these little, I got these little awesome clients in Colorado and they have a mobile pizza company. They never made more than $30,000 this year. They're going to make $360,000. We're not, I'm not going to do a sales training with them, but what we're working on is getting them to be authentically aligned with who they are. And as they do the energetics, like 
fit better. It's not so like, it's not like you're swimming upstream. It's like you turn around and now you're swimming with the current. It's pivots, right? It's those small adjustments that make such a big change. Those, those, and right, correct me if I'm wrong. It's the first step, self-awareness. Awareness is the first key to healing. It's the first key to anything. Because if you're not aware, it's not going to change. Hey, everybody. First, I'd like to thank you all for spending time with me and my guest on the podcast. This show was my canvas to showcase amazing people from the world of recruiting, entrepreneurship, and leadership, and unpack their career journeys for everyone to learn from. But this show is also a business generator for me, as well as creating thought leadership and endless amazing content. And I've taken what I've learned in the past three years and over 200 recorded and 100 live shows and distilled it down into a digital playbook that I call the Pause Course. Now you could learn how I build, manage, and produce the podcast and use it to drive real business development and relationships. Today, I'm sharing all of my secrets behind the podcast, and you can get it all at thepausecourse.com. This course is for anyone, whether you're starting out or an advanced podcaster using it for B2B, a B2C. It's filled with all of my insights, learnings, tips, tricks, and templates. So get it now at thepausecourse.com and learn all my secrets. Thanks. When I say Tony Robbins, what's the first word that comes or first thought that comes to mind? Um, leader. Um. Tony was kind of my first access point to this whole other world. And Tony would introduce me to people like the Donnie Epstein's of the world and, uh, you know, Barry Morgulin. And then I went to India with Tony and, um, you know, we're in the Amazon jungle sleeping in hammocks and shit like that. He's been in this world for so long that he's kind of weeded through the the good people and the bad people and stuff. And then he knew how injured and how broken I was. And he'd be like, "Hey, Dave, you should go meet with him." So I'm like, "All right." And then I just go and like I'd go down that rabbit hole. You trust him, and I'm like, "Okay, I'm all in." And you know, between me and you, you know, I've invested. I think I was adding it up the other day. It was like over eight hundred thousand dollars in coaching and training from these people. And then when I bring that back it's in, it's priceless. If people think about that. Oh, oh my God. Like would I get, paid that, get the money number out of your head? I mean, yes, money is important. We need it. Some have it, some don't, but you're at the end of the day, you're investing in your, you have one, one trip around the, around this lifetime, man. Okay. So like, let's look at it. If I didn't invest in myself, well, I accept the diagnosis at the Mayo Clinic. I go home. I feel sorry for myself. I own that diagnosis because these are the smartest doctors in the world. And I say, you know what? I guess it's just bad luck. Just accepting it. I, I guess this is just my destiny. It's a sign. I guess I'm just going to be, you know, cognitive delayed. I'm going to slur my speech. I'm going to not have a memory. I'm going to take all this medicine all day, every day. And that's just my life. Oh, I'm so, everyone will feel sorry for me. me. Every, everyone me. will feel, feel sorry for me and give me a fake sense of love. But it's not even real in the first place. And that's who I am. Now, the other choice is like, I got to get out of here, man. This is not, this can't be true. I'm not going to accept this. There's got to be a way. There's got to be magic. I have to believe in miracles. I have to find faith. I have to truly trust that this game is set up for me to win. It's not supposed to be sticky, guys. If, you're, if your life is sticky and grindy and efforty, there's nothing wrong with effort, but that's not the whole game. The whole game is showing up authentically aligned to serve a higher purpose and add value to something. That's yeah. it. If you did that, you would make money and you would get paid and people would be happy and the world would be a better place. Preach. I, I, I love it here. So let, let's bring it home. And I definitely want to talk about the book, The Comeback. Who is it for and what is it? what do you want people to take away with after reading it? Well, there were two things that I said to God before I came back. And I said, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do when I go back? You want me to sell all my stuff and go do a mission trip and give everything away? Because I will. Because I know you're real. And the message back was like a father. Like, imagine if your kid asked serious, you. Man. Imagine if your kid would ask you that. You're like, no, 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 that's not what I want. What I want you to do is I want you to take this incredible feeling of love and unconditional love and grace. And I want you to take that back with you. And I want you to share that with everyone you can, everyone that comes across your path. I want you to truly love them like they're your brother or your sister, because they are. That was the message to me. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. I promise. And then I, right before I, I literally did one more glance back and I said, is there anything else? And the message to me was, I want you to share the story. 
And I'm so afraid, Adam. I'm so afraid when I wasn't at the level that I'm at now of what people thought. And I tried to write it a few times. I had trouble. And I'm like, man, I can't tell it all. I can't tell the near death thing. I don't want people thinking that I'm a weirdo or that like this or that, or like they have their beliefs. Da, 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 da. And then it came to a point where I'm like, I don't have a choice. Like Speaking this is, truth. this Speaking is what story. I promise. I'm going to share it. And I'm going to share it naked and vulnerable and authentically and truthfully. And whatever happens, happens. And it's just like, it's just like trusting when I removed the armor. I never felt more naked and exposed in my life because I've been armored up for so long. And I'm like, man, I'm going to get massacred out here. But what happened when I removed that armor was I felt like this cloak of like, and it sounds cheesy, but I felt like this cloak of like light just like sort of surrounding me and protecting me. And it was authentic and it was real. It was the same color light that I saw in heaven. So I knew. And I said, wow, if I can just stay in this light. And I asked God, I said, how do I stay connected to this? Because it's so powerful. And the message back to me was, I need you to spend time with me every day. And I started meditating. I do these meditations and prayers at like four o'clock in the morning, no alarm. I just wake up at four. I do it. Mm -hmm. I still do it to this day. This is my routine. I don't have to write it down. I don't have to like make a big deal about it. It's just an alarm or anything. Yeah, no, that's what you do. I, it, it doesn't matter. I could be any part, any time zone around the world traveling and I still just wake up and do it. And it's like no big deal. It's like, all right. And when I don't do it, <laughs> I hit every red light. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, that's the, Let, that's the way it works, right? Yeah. And uh, um, this, is, this is good. This is good. This is yeah. a, it's, a, it's an inspirational journey. It's it's your truth. And uh, I can't wait to get the book in my hand. So let, let me get one, one quick uh, hockey question here that I forgot to get, it, which is interesting. I mean, what advice would you give to players in the NHL right now to, to stay safe and mentally be the best version of themselves? Be honest. You don't have to cover it up. And I know we're in this tough league and it's like, you don't want to be weak and you soft. don't want your teammates to be soft and stuff. But when, you know, I think it was Carrie Price went and, and had a little check-in with, with somebody cause he needed some help. And there's been other people talking about like mental health and stuff. Like there's a stigma about it that it's like weakness, but I yeah. think showing up and being authentically real and taking steps to work in alignment, you know, like you asked me who, who, like that's half the battle. You ask me who this book is for this book is this, honest to God. And it's not just cause it's my book. These are what my, my, my readers have told me. These are letters I've gotten. These are from like critics. This book is this crazy roller coaster journey of this small town kid from Canada that somehow fights through all these obstacles and gets to the top. He makes the NHL. He's fighting and scrapping to stay there. He stays there. Boom. Has this crazy near death experience. He thinks it's changed his life for the better. He comes back and he lives through hell. He wants to kill himself. And then he like has to like rebuild his whole belief and understanding about the model of the world that he it's completely upside down from what he originally thought was true. It's completely different. Like the whole game is have, set up differently. Have your kids read the book? Loved it. My little guy, and, and my, 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 my 10 year old pounded through this in like two and a half days. My my eleven year old, um, the second he finished reading this, he went out and started shooting shooting pucks outside. That that's fucking legacy, man. That yeah. that that book is legacy, and I and I applaud you as a father. I mean, we don't know it until we're a parent. We don't know until we're a parent what our kid what our parents did for us. And luckily, we've had good parents. Some of us had shitty parents, right? And we want to be the best version of ourselves. But there's nothing more rewarding than setting that great example for your kids and seeing them live it. And I fucking applaud you for that. So let's bring it home here, Dave. Dave, what is the single greatest piece of advice that you've ever received that you take action on every day? There's been so much good advice. The first one, and I don't know if I can do a single, but the first one is I'll I was. Give you, I'll give you. I'll give you two. I was in. I was in the. Uh, I was in Vancouver after the draft in '94 when they went to the finals against the Rangers, and um, they brought us up as these like young kids. We we're draft picks. They're like, "Hey, this is what the team you're going to be on in one one day." And I remember Tim Hunter was a healthy scratch from the lineup and he's a tough guy. And I walked over in the gym after and I said, Hey, Mr. Hunter, I don't mean to bother you. I'm just a new guy and I'm young. Um, what advice do you have for me? And he was so cool. And he said, you know, Dave, he said, the only thing that you'll ever be able to control in this life, you won't be able to control if people like you, they, you won't be able to control if the coach gives you ice time. But in this league, 
showing up as a professional, ready to go every single day and handling your stuff, what you can control, your, your conditioning, your mindset, your habits, your routines. If you can show up like a pro every day when you do get your chance, you're ready. You're ready. But if you take your foot off the gas and you're screwing around and stuff and you do get your chance, you blow it. That might be your one chance. Like how many of us and and Adam, I'm I'm creating this whole new program coming out of my live event, December 3rd, 4th and 5th in Scottsdale, where it's going to be all about turning pro. And the whole thing is. um, Do you want to live like an amateur? Do you want to live like a pro? Do you, like, um, do you want to be a wannabe or do you want to be the real deal? Because there's a different mentality. There's a different mindset. En- there's a different energy to it. There's an edge to it. That's an edge where it's like truthful, aligned, and strong and powerful. And you don't have to prove anything to anybody. You don't care. I love it, man. Dave, let's bring it home here. You know, you you, you look back on your life and, and thank you so much for just sharing your journey. It's a, it's an incredibly inspiring story. And and you look back and you think about the the worst moment in your life when not so much when you were on that stretcher with your neck in a brace, but when you were had that vision of the dirt being thrown on your kids and you were at the bottom, you were literally at the bottom of your ship hit in life and you had to pull yourself up and you had to harness that inner tenacity, that fire that's inside you so deep and find that compass to pull you in the right direction. And on the flip side of that, Dave, you're sitting here sharing your journey, proud father, you've turned your life around. You have seen the light, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And now you're helping others with such gratitude and humility, and it's incredible. Dave Scatcherd, what is your compass in life? What is your North Star? I think having... I'm in love with the what is. And what that means, I was in India and Sri Bhagavan was talking to us and somebody asked, and he's a deity and I think this was called in India, people really look up to him and he's really enlightened. And and I didn't get it at the time. And, And he said, the secret to being happy and living a fulfilled life is to be in love with the what is. And I didn't get it. It was like too above me at the time. But what I've learned to discover is that I am in love with that injury. I am in love that it realigned me and repositioned me into this spot right now where it was, it was working for me. It was trying to move me from a hockey player. It, it tried with the MCL the first year in Nashville. It tried with the MCL the second year in Peoria. <laughs> Boom. I wasn't listening. I wasn't getting the picture that, it was, that I was supposed to be moving into this other phase. And it took a huge shot. Jeez. to realign me and for that for for all of you listening that might be a divorce that might be somebody passing away in your life that might be losing your job that might be covid it's trying to shift you into a different alignment that's more authentic and you as opposed to this inauthentic piece so when these big traumatic things happen no and it sounds so crazy to say because it doesn't feel like it when it's going you're going through it but somehow they're working for you. When I got traded from Vancouver to New York, I went from the penthouse to the outhouse as far as the league was concerned, but I wouldn't have met my wife if I didn't go to um, New York, right? I wouldn't have had the years and the best hockey years I've ever had in my life in New York. So at the time it sucked, but it was the best thing that could have happened to my career. The injury, it sucked when I was going through it. I couldn't figure it out, but now it's the greatest gift that I was ever given. All of these things, the heel surgeries, the mono, the everything. Adversity, man. It, it all made me stronger, man. This is the fabric of who I am. And I would not be the man and have the compassion and sensitivity and empathy for people if I only had the other way. I needed both sides of the coin to, to fall in love with life and be like, wow, we're going through it right now. But you know what? On the other side of this, there's something good. There's some magic somewhere. That, that level of optimism and hope that you bring from a lifetime of incredible, awful and amazing experiences is absolutely epic. And what you're doing now and giving back and you're setting a great example. Dave Sketcher, I wanna thank you so much for joining me and my audience today. I greatly appreciate you. I want everyone to check out the book uh, and they can get it comeback.davescatcher.com and also check out allstarcoaching.com. And Dave, where else can folks connect with you? Where could they learn? Where could they find more? 
Yeah, the books the books on Amazon. Uh, oh, Amazon. So, oh, I forgot about that. So place. you can go to Amazon. Yeah. Uh, that's the fastest way. Um, and I don't know when this is going to drop, but um, you know, I'll send uh, Adam a bunch of links uh, for Instagram at Dave Sketcher at Instagram, Dave Sketcher at Twitter. If you're looking for anything that we got going on, we'll probably be updating things in there. Um, but yeah, check out the book. Um, I'd love to to meet you in person if you ever. Um, if any of you ever uh, see me in an airport or on stage or something somewhere, uh, make sure you come and say hi and that, that you listen to this podcast. And I, I'm, I'd love to meet you. So um, awesome. I hope Dave, all of you, you have an amazing 2022. And Adam, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Awesome. Dave, hang with me one second here as I sign off. I, I want everyone listening. To, I mean, this is this is an epic show. I mean, I, I really think that um, m- my job as a host is to shine a light on others. And that light reflects back. And I want all of you to absorb this episode and really take it all in and check out Dave's book and, and the message behind it. And, and come up with your own takeaways and your own messages and, and apply that to your life accordingly. Uh, we all have one, one shot at this and really want you to make the best of it. I want to thank everyone for listening. I want you to all remember you can find out more at thepodcast.com. Follow us on all social media channels. Remember, take care of each other. Look out for one another and catch us next week for another great episode of the podcast. Take care, everybody. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode soon, jam-packed with more incredible humans. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and sharing. To join the conversation, search The Pausecast on LinkedIn. And to catch up on past episodes and more info, please visit www.thepausecast.com.